We're here because war starts here and destruction starts here. This is the heart of where war starts and where destruction starts. Today is the first day of the Dicey Arms Fair that happens in London every two years. And as you can hear, every time it happens, we come to resist it. And it's where brutality starts, it's where war starts, it's where the deals start that affect lives across the world. From peaceful, democratic protesters in Hong Kong that were shelled by UK tear gas canisters being, being thrown at them, being fired at them, those started here. It's UK tear gas that was used, deals made at the Dicey Arms Fair. We're, we're all quite protected here in the, in the West and we don't really realise what, what's going on abroad and we need to be made more aware of it. War production is the biggest polluter. Stop arms production. Close the factories. Stop arms sales. With arms fairs like this happening in our communities, where the police protect the evil companies inside there and attack the conscientious activists taking a stand, with warning signs of the climate emergency ever growing in front of our eyes, with a total lack of scrutiny and accountability from our media, and with a tiny number of people help hoarding an exorbitant amount of wealth and power. So the tear gas and the guns that are used on protesters and the Black Lives Matter movement, these are the arms that are bought today and that are sold today and that are dealt today during this arms fair. This year, 2021, Bahrain are one of the delegates that have been invited to the arms fair, along with Egypt, along with Saudi Arabia, with Bangladesh and Colombia. These are countries of human rights concern. Our own Foreign and Commonwealth Office have identified these countries as countries of human rights concern. They're here at the arms fair. They've been welcomed by the UK government, by the UK trade and industry. So we're here to resist and to stop it. I think it's completely shameful and absurd that we put all the skills and finance and creativity into arms and into weapons. And so we've been handing out leaflets to people as they go in. We have banners, we have singing, there are people blocking the roads. Hate of the military state. No more, no more, no more war. Britain has been continuously at war since the Second World War. We are renting people out to conduct war and also act as salesmen. Every embassy in the world that Britain has has a, a military attaché flogging weapons. It's, uh, it's got so large that, frankly, the, um, the exchequer can't do without the money. To be in Bahrain in prison, or what it means for the Saudi people to suffer executions, for Saudi women to be thrown in jail because they wanted to drive a car. This is how these weapons are going to be used. And I feel privileged and I feel honored to be here with you today. It's just I wanted to say to you that your message is a message of hope. Mm -hmm. And that the British government, who is complicit in these complaints, in these abuses, in these wars, it should stop. And I think it should stop from right here. Saudi Arabia, Israel, Bahrain, UAE. It's a shame that they are invited here. Coming here and lying on the road and being seen and making a protest, um, like we hope it makes it harder for people so that they walk past us and can stop and um, think about, and even if it makes like one or two people change their mind. We actually tried to block the entrance from Custom House Excel and the people who were going into the arms fair were crawling under our arms, climbing over us because they were so desperate to get into their seminars about weapons. And I just find it completely mind-blowing that anybody would be that committed to buying and selling weapons. But for every disaster, every scandal and every crisis, there are moments of hope, of solidarity and of optimism to be found everywhere. Whether it's the Italian dock workers refusing to load boats with weapons bound for Israel, 
or a small community last year in Pollock Shield in Glasgow lining the streets and barricading police vehicles to stop them deporting their neighbour, or whether it's everything that every single one of you have done this week in protest against this jamboree of death. Our movement is growing and the government might be trying to clamp down on our right to protest with the police crime sentencing and courts bill, but we need to protest louder and be more organised than ever before.